Good morning, everybody. This is John Mangerati, Town Manager in Acton. This is the May 1st, 2020 broadcast of the Senior Center's program, Java with John. I'm very excited today about the program we have uh, for you. We're, we're broadcasting live on 94.9, and we're live on YouTube TV. We'll be taking questions later in the program. If you have a question, please send it in, manager at actonma.gov, or you can call 978-929-6611. Uh, so this week we have, uh, we'll give some brief updates on what we're doing uh, with related to COVID-19. And we have a very special business uh, leaders panel where we have some uh, all stars of our local business scene in Acton here. And they're going to share some of the information uh, that they're dealing with and, and how their businesses are being impacted by this, uh, this pandemic that we're all facing. So I really look forward to that discussion. So uh, before we get into that, though, I just wanted to go through some standard things that we do. Our nursing director, Heather York, has been a big part of this program every week. Uh, she's not available to join us today. She's been working 24 hours a day and I, I gave her the morning off. Um, but she gave me an update that I wanted to share with all of you so I can read that right now uh, so that we can all sort of have the latest information. Uh, last night we released a statement. Um, at this time, there are 92 reported cases of COVID-19 in Acton. Public health nurses are working closely with residents and are conducting contact tracing to identify and provide guidelines to anyone who has been in close contact with these patients. Last night, uh, we reported a significant jump in our cases, and this was due to extensive testing that was done at the Life Care Center, uh, and we found out that 23 of the 120 residents there tested positive. So uh, Heather has been in communication with the Life Care Center every day uh, or every week and regularly, and, and they've been doing a really great job of communicating with us. And so we knew that they did a bunch of testing and, and we were, ex we were uh, anticipating what the results would show. We found out yesterday that there was a significant increase. So uh, the, the Life Care Center has stopped allowing visitors over a month ago. Uh, they have the situation under control to the best that we understand and we're communicating with them regularly. Uh, they've taken several precautions uh, in, guide, in accordance with state guidelines. And, uh, but to protect uh, residents and uh, people that live there's privacy, we're not disclosing any more information about that. Uh, rest assured that Heather, and our Board of Health uh, is actively monitoring the situation and they stand uh, ready to assist in any way that they can uh, during this rapidly evolving event. Uh, many of you saw earlier this week that Governor Baker extended the, the closure of non-essential businesses. Uh, we're gonna talk more about that shortly. Uh, they also, he also uh, extended the ban on gatherings of more than 10 people and the stay at home advisory. So. That's uh, two more weeks uh, that we're going to continue to look at the situation, evaluate how it impacts us locally here in Acton. Uh, our local state of emergency remains in effect, and it will do so until the Board of Health and the Board of Selectmen deem it safe to release that. Um, all, all buildings and playgrounds and Nara Park and, and all the things that we really uh, wish were still open uh, are not, and they're still closed. So uh, thank you for your patience. Thank you all for so doing your social distancing. And thank you for uh, wearing masks when you're out in public. It makes a big difference. Um, so just getting, getting back to uh, other things that we normally do on the program, uh, we have Sharon Mercurio, who is our Council on Aging Director, uh, works at the Senior Center. The Senior Center has been closed. Um, that's why we're doing this program virtually. Java with John is something that we did at the Senior Center every month. And it was great. We would go and, and give an update. And then the seniors would ask uh, dozens of questions and try to give me a hard time. And I, I try to answer the best I could. Uh, we're, we're doing it now virtually. And uh, we still have an opportunity for questions. So uh, Sharon, any updates um, from the Senior Center uh, to share this morning? Sure, I'll be short and sweet because I know we have a loaded program today. Um, first of all, I wanted to thank you for doing this program and for all the guests that um, take the time to do this program. It's really important for us to try to connect to seniors that may not be connected to technology. So the radio and Acton TV is, has been a huge part of that. I also wanted to thank all the volunteers. We still have volunteers from Minuteman Senior Services delivering Meals on Wheels every day. We've had an onslaught of folks um, bringing us handmade masks, which has been fabulous. We've been able to get those out to the community. Um, and just volunteers that want to help in any way they can. So thank you for that. Um, 
we, we've stepped into technology a little bit. Acton Senior Center now has a Facebook page. So that's great. That's a first for us. So um, if you're on Facebook, please find us and like us and follow us. We've been trying to keep daily updates and pictures and that sort of thing to keep people connected. Um, secondly, we're going to be joining with recreation to do a pen pal program. So children in the community can connect with seniors um, right back and forth again to help with those connections. So if you're interested, please give us a call and we'll get you that information. Um, some new videos have been released on Acton TV. So there's some new exercise classes and line dancing classes. We're trying to keep those fresh and keep people up to date there. Um, and then just a reminder, because the local businesses have been so fabulous to us through the years um, at the Council on Aging, you know, take time to please support them. You know, do take out, you can do some grocery shopping at restaurants, just keep them in mind. Um, so that's, that's all I have for right now. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Nice job as always. And, and we are, uh, National Poetry Month is over, uh, but we still hope that you have a poem for us to close out the session later this morning. I do. Thank you. Thank you. So our next guest uh, is uh, MJ Selby. He goes, he goes by Selby. He's our Land Use and Economic Development Director. He's worked for the town for uh, about four years and he does a great job working with our Economic Development Committee and my office to try to help our businesses and, and oversee all the land use functions. Uh, Selby, uh, Thank you. Do you want to say hello and uh, any, you want to provide your contact information for people out there? Uh, yeah, sure. Hi, John. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, as you said, my name is Selby. It's my last name is what I go by. I've been with the town for four and a half years. Um, and my title is the Land Use and Economic Development Director. So in addition to um, managing the Land Use Department, which includes building, planning, natural resources and health, I also do economic development initiatives to help our business community. And that's how I met all the panelists that we have on board today. Um, I've, I've interacted with all of them in one way, shape or form in my four years here. I work closely in particular with, uh, with both Baron and Doug Sieber with our Acton, manufacturing, uh, Acton Area Manufacturing Collaborative, whereby we were working on workforce development initiatives to, um, to try to get them employees during a very, very tight labor market um, and I think that the tables have kind of turned uh, as far as the labor market goes these days. Um, so I want to thank all of our business um, owners and managers for, for participating in this panel. And um, I'm looking forward to hearing what we as a town can do to help support you guys and your businesses. Great. Well, thank you. So now let's, uh, let's get started with the business panel. So I'm very excited to be joined today by the leaders uh, in, in local businesses here in Acton. And here how things are going. We have a diverse group of uh, international manufacturers, uh, in, an independent bookstore, and a, a very popular yoga studio. So uh, let's get right to meeting our guests here. So our first guest is Russ Layton. Russ is the founder and CEO of Sparks Hockey, which is located in Acton, actually right below the Senior Center is uh, where, where the office is. Sparks makes ice skate sharpeners, uh, which are used in over 20,000 locations uh, around the world. It, Sparks was named the 56th fastest growing company in America by Inc. Magazine. Russ was in acting with his family. Russ, uh, I've been trying to connect with you. It's great to meet you uh, finally virtually. And uh, thank you very much for being here. Um, I, I couldn't pass up this intro, this, uh, this invite. No, no excuse. Yeah, so and I've heard a lot about these sharpeners uh, and I really congratulate you on your success. Can you, uh, as before we get started with the, the, the meat of the, the session here, can you just give us a, a heads up, what, it, what it makes your sharpener so unique and so popular? And who are your, who are your biggest customers? So I think the, the innovation that we brought to the industry was automation. So our product allows someone without any skill, without any experience to sharpen skates to, to basically to the level that a, like a pro uh, equipment manager could for the NHL. And what that did was, democratize the process of skate sharpening so our products have now infiltrated the market down you know families at which is our largest customer segment um, all the way up to the nhl so high schools retailers so we sell to professionals who sharpen and then consumers who sharpen all around the world now wow that's that's really exciting yeah hey, we've been hearing a lot of buzz about it so we're excited to, to have you here in acton uh, so thank you. I look forward to hearing more about what you've been up to uh, lately, because I know it's it's not necessarily skate sharpening. Um, uh, <laughs> Baron, um, Baron Peter is the CEO of, of Associated Environmental Systems. It's a in, it's an innovative uh, 
advanced manufacturing operation we have right here in Acton uh, in Post Office Square. Uh, AES makes test chambers that test electronics such as batteries and, and helps figure out how to make them last longer and under extreme conditions. Uh, Baron, uh, thank you for being here. It's great, great to see you again. I've been, I've been through your facility. It's, it's very impressive. I've seen the massive solar uh, array you have on the roof and uh, it's great to, great to have your partnership here. Uh, did I do an okay job of describing uh, what your chambers do, or do you want to? You did, a a you did a fantastic job, John. Uh, John, thank you for having us, and Selby, thank you very much. You guys have been very supportive, and the town's been fantastic. Great. Well, I look forward to hearing more about what uh, you've been up to lately. Uh, so, Doug Sieber, Doug is the vice president of operations at Hearts. Hearts is Hearts is the uh, one of our largest employers here in town. You can see it right off of uh, Route 2, and you can see it off of um, behind the high school. Uh, their, their, off, their operation is, is large there. Doug's worked there for 40 years. Um, Hearts makes uh, uh, fancy fabrics for convertibles and interior fabrics for vehicles, and I've even seen handbags that you make. Um, so, Doug, is, uh, is, is that a good description of what you make or you want to add to that? And thank you very much for being here with us this morning. I know you've been involved with a lot of initiatives uh, with Selby and uh, it's great to have your continued support. Our, uh, you're on mute. Oh, sorry, you're on mute. I, I'll unmute you. All right, you're all set. I got you. <laughs> you have me? Yes, here we are. Hi, Doug. Okay. So Hearts, is, uh, Hearts has been in Acton since the mid-60s. We love working with the town. We have for, for a long period of time. Um, most people really don't know that we're there, but the, uh, the space is about 350,000 square feet in plus or minus on about 60 acres of land there in Acton. So for a lot of people, they don't realize it. They drive by every single day and they never realize the, the complexity of the business. Um, convertible topping is still um, one of our oldest and most tried and true parts of our business. Um, we also make the interiors for automobiles. And so like door panels and instrument panels and center consoles and things along that line too. So it's, it's very much a coated fabrics, textile, coated foams industry. Um, Acton is not our only location. We're also uh, in Mannheim, Germany, uh, outside Mumbai in Pune, India, and we're in Ningbo, China. So we, we're kind of spread across the world at this point in time. So we've certainly, not to jump ahead, but we've certainly felt the pandemic's effect across all our businesses worldwide. Well, and I appreciate you. I know you all are very busy and I appreciate you taking time to be here this morning to, to talk with us and, and share with our residents mm -hmm. what, what you have to. So th thanks again. Uh, our, our next Absolutely. guest is, is Paul Swyden. Paul owns uh, and operates the Silver Unicorn Bookstore in West Acton. Paul moved here a few years ago and uh, just in 2018 decided to open this bookstore. Previously, he was a, a writer, a sports writer and editor for outlets such as the Boston Globe. Uh, Paul, great to see you. I, I love your store. I'm sorry that it hasn't been open for a while, but I'm glad to hear you've been keeping busy. Um, one thing I was wondering uh, before we get started with the panels, what is the name Silver Unicorn? Where did that come from? Uh, honestly, I just kind of made it up out of thin air. Um, <laughs> unicorns were, at the time, were having a moment um, in, in our broader culture, but um, the unicorn bookstore didn't sound right to me, and silver's my favorite color, so there you go. That, that sounds like a perfect reason. Uh, great. Well, I look forward to, to hearing more about uh, what you've been up to. Uh, Kira Marino. Kira yes. owns uh, Revolution Community Yoga, also in West Acton. Uh, she's owned the business for uh, about seven or eight years and uh, prov provides uh, a welcoming environment for many of our residents. And uh, yoga, I know, is, is, a, is a big part of people's lives and it's great that you're able to provide that venue for people. Um, so I, I know your studio is closed. So I look forward to hearing um, how you've been uh, keeping in touch with your customers. <laughs> Absolutely. I will probably be sharing later when we talk about um, the ways the pandemic has affected everyone, but we've gone completely online at this point. Um, so it's been um, 
uh, interesting time getting that all ramped up, but I think people have been really grateful that they've had that connection there with their teachers and their yoga community through all of this. So um, yeah, we're here, we're still doing our thing. <laughs> Great. So, so you've had to innovate, which I think everybody's doing. So I think that's, that's gonna tie nicely to uh, our discussion here this morning. Um, so before I read the first question, I just wanna say again that I really appreciate you taking time to participate in this uh, and that Acton is very proud to have all of your businesses here as part of our community. Uh, and before I read the first question, just wanna mention for the audience uh, that's listening on 94.9 WAEM, uh, that if there's a question you want to ask to the panel or to other guests, please call 978-929-6611, or you can shoot an email to manager at actonma.gov. So um, we've introduced the panel. Let's get started. Uh, so uh, this is something that, you know, from my perspective, it's been a very challenging time for our local government. Uh, we've had to completely change the way we do business over the last six weeks. We were very limited to what we could do remotely, and now we're doing everything remotely. Uh, so that required a lot of work, a lot of effort, and a lot of change. So I'm very interested to hear um, how that's been for, for your company. Um, have, you, have you made major changes to the way you do things? Uh, what, what's been, how has your business been impacted by COVID-19? Baron, did you want to start? Sure, I'd be happy to start. Um, you know, I think you know, we were kind of early to recognize what was going on from a pandemic perspective because of our relationships with customers and vendors in uh, China and then in uh, Santa Clara. And in fact, our service manager's wife, who's a nurse, um, treated one of the first, um, you know, confirmed cases of COVID-19 in the USA in uh, Santa Clara. And um, so they ended up being, you know, quarantined in their 950 square foot uh, home for two weeks uh, all together right after that happened. And that was, that was very early on. That was, you know, before March, basically March 1st. So that was a, a real eye opener for us. Uh, fortunately, they made it through without any issues. Um, and we've got about 25 employees in their Santa Clara office. And so that was kind of an early wake up call for us. So we immediately stopped all vendors and visitors coming in and we set in motion a series of policies that were recommended by the CDC. Um, and we also quickly realized, um, hey, we've got a lot of customers who are considered essential. So we had to do a big outreach to um, all those customers. We put it together a big spreadsheet, um, prioritizing all their orders. Uh, you know, Zoll and uh, Medtronic are two of those that are, that are local that are making um, uh, ventilators uh, here in Massachusetts. Um, and then, you know, we, we had hand sanitizing stations put around everywhere. We had cleaning crew during the day and the evening. Out on the factory floor, we put six foot mark tape everywhere so that all the high traffic areas, they knew what the distance was. Every entrance, we had the six foot marks. Everybody had face masks early on. Um, pretty much starting March 13th, uh, all the um, office started working from home. Uh, and then the manufacturing team, we were, we were cut back to about 70% of what we normally have. Um, and, you know, so we're maintaining the social distancing and, um, and keeping all the high risk, um, you know, team members at home. Um, you know, sort of unfortunately, we just received a foosball table in February, and that's probably not going to get any use this uh, this year. <laughs> the foosball. All right. Yeah, there's a lot of things. We've, no sports. There's been no sports anywhere, unfortunately. No. <laughs> it's been tough for everybody, including yeah. uh, your employees. Well, thanks. Uh, that's that's interesting. I know it's a difficult time. Uh, Doug, what what I understand that you've been doing some some new uh, manufacturing related to this crisis. Can you share a little bit about that? Well, we still have a lot of customers that are part of what is considered the transportation essential businesses. So we were, we've been running to some degree, very much a skeleton crew. Our sales, probably like everybody's, has dropped off dramatically. Um, but we do have some that we need to continue to supply. We worked with the governor's office, state of Massachusetts, and I let, obviously talk with Shelby about it. Um, the hardest thing that we've probably had to deal with was like Baron, we saw it coming in the sense of our operation in China. We knew if it was there, once it, it was going to move through Europe and then eventually then come to the United States, we'd started to put in 
and to get ready for it. Um, the biggest thing was trying to, you know, when you have over 400 employees, you're trying to get um, you know, personal protective equipment, try to find hand sanitizer, try to find uh, chemicals and things to do disinfecting was um, made us go back to the drawing board. One of, one of the advantages of being a chemical manufacturer is we, we had isopropyl alcohol on site. And so we were able to actually make our own disinfectant make our own hand sanitizer using just gel that we were able to find. And that has helped us tremendously uh, to try to get the facility clean and to, uh, and to keep it that way. As I'm sure with Baron and with others, you know, if you're, you're forced to have to look at things differently, you know, um, social distancing in a manufacturing plant is very difficult. It's not, we're not cell, we're, we're continuous manufacturing. So it, it makes it very difficult um, trying to maintain six foot um, separation, uh, wearing masks, wearing gloves where appropriate. It's it involved in a whole new training protocol. Now we're fortunate we have people on staff in our engineering group and our safety groups that um, have backgrounds in this. So that was very, very useful. Um, and we've been able to write new safety protocols and social distancing protocols and manufacturing work in place protocols. So it's, it's a huge training process and a major change in how we're going to have to do business in the future. Great. Well, yeah, thank you. Uh, it's, uh, that's interesting that you made your own hand sanitizer. Uh, I wish we had known that earlier. I would have come knocking on your door. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we, we were struggling like every, we were struggling like everybody else. I mean, we were trying to think about where, where to get it. We were putting pressure on our local suppliers, you know, the size of hearts is where we have a, lot, a very good supply base. Um, honestly, it just kind of came to us one day. We, we have isopropyl alcohol and in a 70, 30 blend with the ionized water we can use for really sanitizing or disinfecting equipment, I think we actually found, of all things, ultrasound gel that we were able to get and mix with isopropyl alcohol and 730 blend to at least make, make, make some. But um, that stuff is starting, as we're finding now, um, PPE is starting to become much more available than it was in the past. Um, I'm not sure if everybody else on this uh, on the board here is starting to see that. I'm not sure, Baron, if you're starting to see that. But if, if we wanted to buy masks now, you can pretty much buy masks if you want them. Uh, Doug, that's a great transition to Russ because I think he's been helping with that uh, situation. Yeah. So the the abundance of PPE isn't isn't music to my ears actually right now. Um, so I guess that's a good segue to you know what Baron and Doug were just saying is that when this hit, um, we are a very, very small office um, below the senior center um, with 25 employees in it all kind of elbow to elbow manufacturing products that, that are for an industry that's very, very social, hockey and figure skating. Um, and our customers are either participants or retailers. So when for us, it was really when the NHL canceled the season on March 12th, mm -hmm. it was like it fell off a cliff. Like it, everything just, it was an a, um, avalanche of all the youth sports canceling, all the retailers closing. And for us, we, as a, as a small company, we couldn't weather the storm. And so we did a furlough of 70% of our employees, which was devastating because we built this from the ground up. Oh, 70%, wow. It was, it was, it was tough. Um, and, and then the gear started turning because there was the PPE shortage and we, you know, like Doug was saying, we have a pretty good supplier base, um, local in many cases. And, um, we had the travel cases for our sharpeners, like sitting next to us as we're thinking about what are we going to do? And they're full of foam. And so we just went to our lasers and started cutting the foam out to try to make face shields and, and we also reached out to Bauer, who is a New England company. It's a hockey company based in New Hampshire, and they were busy. And so we collaborated with um, their company and came up with our design and started sourcing. And we let everybody go on a Friday, and I think everybody was back on a Monday. So we we went oh, pretty great. yeah we went pretty quick to from you know what are we going to do to how do we space everyone out and we have probably half of the production folks working at home so we've switched to a you know it's, it's very much a cell based process now where we send people come in the morning 
you know, we leave out packages for various individuals and they pick up their, their bits and pieces and they go home and create sub assemblies at their homes. And then they bring them back and they integrate back at the office to very few people who do final assembly and shipping. So, and wow. you know, so that's totally different. You just opened a totally different business overnight or over weekend. That's amazing. Yeah, we, now, we now sell to dentists and funeral homes and police stations, hospitals all over the country, all over the world. Um, so it's, it's, it's very rewarding too. I think everyone feels like they're, they're doing something to combat the pandemic, you know, at, at their work and sort of get us out of this as fast as we can. I think that's what we all want. So it's, it's been a very interesting pivot and I think one that everyone's proud of. So. Well, that's great. Uh, that's, we really appreciate the, the in, in, innovation and engine in what you've done to, to help, help our community and our, and our sounds like everybody, our medical professionals. So thank you very much. Uh, so, so Paul, what's it like uh, having an independent bookstore when during a non non essential business closure? How, how does that work? Yeah, so you know, I just wrote my newsletter that'll go out later today. Uh, April was the first month since we opened where not a single customer came into the store, and uh, you know, it's a little surreal. Um, but but we've been managing well. You know, the the biggest challenge for us is. You know, as non-essential, we're only allowed to take internet orders and we're only allowed to have one person in the store at a time. Um, so, you know, like like everybody else here, we've been pivoting. Um, you know, we have people tracking orders remotely and feeding that information to the people, that, you know, to me in the store. Um, you know, we have um, been doing, we did a virtual book club last month. We're doing another one this month. We're doing a a virtual book launch on a Zoom call that'll look much like this uh, in a couple weeks for a for a picture book for a local author. Um, we've most importantly we've gotten really good at shipping and uh, doing book deliveries. Um, you know, before this, the the West Acton Post Office is just down the street, and in every any given week, we'd only ship you know two or three packages. So we just walk them over there. You know, no need to be complicated about it, but now we're shipping, you know, 40 uh, to 50 books every couple of days. Um, so, you know, we've got scale in the office now and we're all set up with stamps.com and, you know, just, just trying to figure out how to serve our customers most efficiently. That's great. Yeah. It's really uh, figuring out how to get it done. It's really exciting to see you, you be able to pull that off. Kira, what, how do you do yoga uh, virtually? Have you been able to do it? <laughs> So, um, yeah, we had to, we had to, uh, figure that out pretty quickly. Um, I closed the studio on the evening of March 12th. Um, and by the 16th, we had our first, you know, uh, meditation class online. There's a lot of online yoga, um, available out there. Um, I think one of the things that people have really appreciated from our community is that they're seeing and working with teachers that they know um, personally and that they go and see, you know, on a regular basis. We have students who come in, you know, almost daily. Um, it's a huge part of their, their life and um, just the way they take care of themselves um, mentally and physically. And so we just said we got to get everything rolling online. So we have Zoom classes. Um, people sign up on our usual schedule and uh, the teacher teaches from home right now um, and the students log in and then after they take the class they can get a copy of the recording of the class for a couple days so um, you know they get some good value out of you know their class pass that they pay for for the class and they get to see their favorite teachers so that's great. Well, um, that's exciting. And um, I hope hopefully that you can be back in person again soon. But it's great to hear that you've found ways to connect with your customers. And Yeah, I wanted to just share one last thing is that um, knowing that a lot of people are, you know, not uh, don't have loads of money coming in right now. We do have a free recording library on our website. So people who want to try yoga, meditation or anything like that um, can go right to our website, yogaacton.com. And there's a whole library of classes they can view whenever they want to to take. Really? So, so is it easy? Should I try it out? Totally easy. You should completely right. try it. Yeah. 
<laughs> All right, that's something for me to do this weekend. Thank you. Great. <laughs> um, so uh, the next question for our panel, and anyone can jump in. Um, I know we want to try to keep this to uh, 45 minutes, so I, don't, I, don't want to, I know you're all very busy, so I don't want to keep you too long. But I, I, we really want to know what's your business going to look like uh, when when we get through this. I mean, we're all we're all learning every day more about when when things may start getting closer to normal, and we don't know yet. But I'm sure you're all thinking about what's next. And is there anything that you're going to be doing differently um, as a result of this? Well, I can jump back I in can. since I just ended. <laughs> um, so we're going to be doing a pretty slow crossfade. Um, we'll, once we're able to open the studio, um, we'll have a pretty sparse in-person schedule. Um, things are, the classes are going to be smaller. Things are going to be a lot different than people are used to just in terms of, um, you know, the process of coming in and not being everyone super close to each other on mats and stuff like that. Um, but we're also going to keep our online classes going so that people who aren't comfortable coming out yet um, or can't come out yet uh, will have access to the classes as well. That's great. Yeah, well, hopefully hopefully that'll be soon. Uh, yeah. uh, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> Doug, what? Uh, well, what? you know, for, well, for a large business, you know, just trying to, again, like I touched upon it before, you know, from one aspect, trying to run a manufacturing facility, similar to like Hollywood Barron's trying to do, trying to keep people socially separated is, is, is going to be difficult. But imagine if I'm trying to uh, have 200 employees try trying to punch in at the same time using a hand reader, which is what we've always used in the past. So we don't use a hand reader anymore. Um, we're looking now to move toward facial recognition, temperature scanning, auto, everything's automatic. That's going to be a major change. Uh, occupancies. I'm sure, Baron, you have a lunch room and a coffee room and things like that. You know, ours were 150 employee capacities, probably down to 20. So trying to figure out how we do that sort of maneuvering. No, you know, conference rooms, meetings and things like that are all going to be people who are Zooming from their office. So that's, that adds to the complexity of the business because you, you lose the social interaction by being able to see facial expression, talk to people, you know, as on a Zoom call like this, it's very difficult. Once someone once starts talking, it breaks up. You know, it it it, it complicates things a, a little bit. So, it's going to be a major challenge, I think, for any business, whether it's uh, commercial or industrial, to try to deal with the changes that are going to be coming forth. Not to mention sales are down, <laughs> like with everybody, I'm sure. Yes. Well, it's yeah. It's, what are you gonna do with everybody at lunchtime? That's that's going to be interesting. <laughs> You know, it's it's kind of funny. I, I, I we probably on any given day, I bet you we are probably in the vicinity of 150 to 200 lunches bought locally in Acton. So, are we going to have people not doing that? We're moving into the summertime. We have opportunity for people to go outside and eat. People might go to their cars and eat um, in the parking lot. Um, certainly, we're, that's going to be the one of the bigger challenges that we're dealing with as we start to bring people back and operations start again is how do we continue to have people socially separate? We've handled it in facility for manufacturing as well as we can. How are we going to handle it in the off time? Staggering breaks, staggering lunches, limiting times where people can go. That's going to be a real challenge and something, things that we're still working on. Okay. I'll, I'll jump in. I think we have a lot of the same getting back to work constraints and obstacles that Darren and Doug just talked about. I think one thing that we're positioned for that we're just starting to see is that some of our commercial customers that had been on the fence about adopting our technology uh, are coming to us saying that because our product is automated and there's, there's a, it limits the amount of touch you have to have on other people's personal articles like their skates, figure skates and ice skates, we may actually see a boost on our commercial business where retailers don't want to be handling as much other people's personal articles. And so they'd rather load their product into an automated piece of equipment that takes care of it. So we have, we're, we're hoping we actually come out of this pandemic with a little bit of a boost to our technology because it's a little bit more hands off. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. You know, like Russ, you know, we're looking at how do we pivot, right? Um, and we've already done that. We have the same exact things Doug has, um, you know, with, with a, a cafeteria. 
And, you know, now, you know, we've, we've actually sort of allowed people on the manufacturing floor to, you know, designated areas that they can eat and we've spread out tables and chairs. Um, when the weather's nice, it'll be nice to be able to go outside and have everybody eat. We buy uh, lunch for the whole company every other Friday and that's always from a local business, whether it's Acton House uh, pizza or something. Um, but yeah, I think, um, you know, CDC released uh, what last week or, or yesterday protocols for back to work process. So our whole team is sort of going through that back to work protocol uh, process, which, you know, we're going to be, you know, screening our vendors as they come through and before they get into the process. Uh, more business is going to be done remotely. Uh, our service team, we've got 30 or so service team members. They're going to continue wearing protective gear, you know, probably through the end of the year and beyond. Um, and then as, as Doug mentioned, there's, there's an economic slowdown coming uh, here too, and, and that's going to have an impact for sure on our business in the next 12 to 24 months. And, you know, we're, we, you know, we're a recipient of the, uh, the CARES Act PPP money. So, you know, we've got the next uh, two and a half months covered from a payroll perspective, but, you know, what's going to happen after that and what's the economy, you know, going to look like then? That's, yeah. that's great to hear that you were able to access that funding. I know it, it went very quickly and there was an additional batch released recently and I, I wonder how long that's going to last. I know Selby's been working with some businesses and trying to navigate that. It sounds like uh, it's difficult to get in. So I'm glad to hear you were able, you were mm -hmm. able to. Yeah. If anybody needs any help, just just ask. <laughs> <laughs> so Paul, are you going to you going to do more online stuff after this is all over or are you going to go back to what you were doing? So, you know, I think the biggest thing for us is you know, we've always had a, a, a really good website, um, but I think a lot of our customers didn't didn't know that it was there for them. Um, and so I think we'll we'll keep doing um, a brisk online business uh, after this is all over. You know, I know, but we haven't we haven't really made too many decisions one way or the other about how we're going to handle things. You know, on a on a normal weekday, you know, we don't we we don't have so many customers in the store at once that you know, social distancing would be an issue, but on the, on the weekends or, um, you know, when it's busier, um, you know, that we're going to have to talk about, you know, do we, you know, do we let people in in waves kind of the, the same way the supermarkets are doing? So it's a, uh, it's going to be a challenge to figure it all out, but we're, we're looking forward to it. We're just looking forward to having uh, face to face interactions with people again. Great. Well, thank you. Uh, so I think we have, uh, we have one more question. I know everybody's busy. I want to get you back to uh, everything that you're doing to try to keep your business going. So we, we just want to do one more question and then, then we'll, we'll close out. Selby, uh, can you please ask our last question? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'd like to hear from all of you and any other business um, owner or manager that happens to be listening. Uh, is there anything that the town staff can do or, or the town or Acton as a community can do to, to support your business operations moving forward in this post-COVID world? Come in for you. I'll go. I mean, <laughs> yeah, no, go ahead. well, you know, it's, it's, I, we have such a, a large workforce, um, you know, 200 or plus during the days and, you know, probably close to that at night. Um, I know, and this would be something that I think would be really beneficial maybe for other people too. We don't, I don't know. I'm in the office three days a week. I don't know who's open for lunch other than the supermarkets. But, you know, if there are, t if there are, if we could get a centralized list of what are the Acton House or TC Landau's or New London, who's open, who isn't open, who's, who is doing curbside pickup, who's not doing curbside pickup. Um, that would be helpful because then what we could do for us is we could help support those local businesses because our people still come in, they still want lunches. And for the most part, they're bringing more from home than they have been or they're used to. Um, but if we could get those lists of these are the numbers, these are the, where you call, these are the menus that maybe a limited menu that they're open. Um, it, it would be, um, and make that available. That'd be great. I'm sure that's something that uh, the local businesses would, the smaller local food businesses would be, would be, uh, that, that's Good great. Thank you. Well. Thank you for asking that. Selby, why don't you mention what, uh, what we've been working on to try to help with that initiative? Yeah. Um, as soon as uh, I came back from vacation um, on March 18th and everything was shut down, one of the first things I did was compile that exact cool. list, Doug. Um, I Perfect. reinvigorated the, uh, the Acton Restaurant Week website, and that's the repository for the most up-to-date list of who's offering takeout delivery, curbside pickup. So all of our local restaurants, um, if they're in open and operation, and if I'm aware of it, 
um, there on that website. So act, actinrestaurantweek.com. And we're actually, we actually have, uh, we're starting a social, we started a social media campaign to try to create awareness about our restaurants that are open, take out selfie mm. campaign. So Doug, if, if uh, you're into taking selfies, uh, if you go to, uh, if you go to no. one of our local restaurants, <laughs> take one, take no, one no, no. and uh, post it online to help generate some business. Yeah, what I, what I can do is, I'm not sure if others will do it too, but I, I'll talk to you, so I'll be after this or we're at some point. I'll get a list. And see, for me, it'd be getting a, our, our, our folks in the plan are not going to go online. So it's going to be, I'll get a list. These are the places that are open. These are their numbers, if you, and these are what they can do. And try to make it a little bit easier. But, you know, I, I remember once we, we were down on a Friday because we had to do an inventory. So we had 400 less people in the facility on a day. And I remember that... Uh, TCs called me up and said, Hey, did I, did we upset anybody? And I said, I don't know. What do you mean? I'm not sure. And he, he, he reminded me, he said, I usually do about 150 meals of, on a Friday with you guys and no one came in today. Wow. And I had to, I had to, I had to tell him that it was because we were, we were shut down on a, on a day just to do our special inventory. And that was why we, no one was in the facility for the day. So again, if we can get the numbers, I'll work with Selby on it. That'd be great. And hopefully we can get some of our people to go out and start to pick meals up and support the local businesses. Thank you. We appreciate it. We'll get that to you right away. Anything else? What can we do as a town to help you or as a community? You know, members of the community want to try to help our businesses. What can, what can they do or what can we do as an organization? I wonder if along those same lines, even just as residents, I'm a resident of Acton too. And, you know, I often wonder, you know, if I needed hardware, does Ace Hardware do curbside like what other what other things can we do in a non-touch way in our town to support local businesses that we might be overlooking or heading to the internet for just to give the residents of the town a way to support the town through this where they might not know what the way is to do it yeah i mean uh, to, to russ's point i think we're sort of fortunate in in acton at least in the before times um that we have a lot of local choice. Um, you know, there's a lot of businesses that, that provide things that, you know, you don't have to go online to get them. Um, you know, we don't have Walmart here in town, but we, you know, you can, you can get pretty much everything you need from a local business, but not everyone who lives in town knows that, uh, or understands that. So I think that would be tremendously helpful. Mm. And it actually, it actually could be a positive that comes out of this is that we figure out a way as a society to support local businesses because you, this whole, the whole curbside concept, I'm, I'm seeing it amongst my neighbors, like picking up alcohol, opening up the back of their car and somebody drops in a case of wine and they drive away. They're like, this is fantastic. <laughs> that, that was there the whole time. Nobody knew it. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I agree. I think that um, the community is definitely pulling together uh, during this time and, and Acton is, is, is a strong community uh, and thanks to a strong government too. So, um, you know, we emailed the police department and the fire department, you know, early on and, uh, you know, both of them emailed us right back and said, yep, your teams are there. We understand anything you need, let us know. And, um, you know, it's really comforting and, and, and nice to, you know, to have that. Uh, and to have that community and, and to be able to do those emails with those, uh, you know, community uh, and, uh, and, and leaders in the community. So that's, that's nice. And I'll just jump in my, um, my studio is part of the village works um, complex over in West Acton. And um, I've been really grateful to uh, our landlord, Matthias Rosenfeld for, you know, keeping, he's sharing as much as he can and about all the businesses there on their Facebook page. Um, so I think just bringing awareness is probably the, the number one thing that can be done. Um, just letting people know that, that we're out here, you know, so that the website that you have um, going sounds awesome. And yeah. I'd be happy to share that on my Facebook page too. So I'd love to get a, a link to it. <laughs> And, and I mean, just keep doing what you're doing here. I mean, this program is great. Um, everything that Mark and, and the people over at Acton TV do is tremendous. Um, it, it, you know, like Sharon said earlier, it really helps us have a sense of togetherness when we're apart. 
Great. Well, we're, we're at the 45 minute mark. So I need, I know you guys, everybody need to go back to uh, what you're running your companies. So we really appreciate you taking the time uh, this morning to join the job with John program. Uh, Baron Peter from AES, Russ Layton from Sparks Hockey, Doug Sieber from Hearts, Paul Swiden from Silver Unicorn, Kira Marino from Revolution Community Yoga. You've been great guests and we're really proud that you're part of our community and thank you so much for participating. Uh, we, uh, we're closing out the panel and uh, we appreciate you being here. We're now gonna move to our closing remarks on the program. So uh, if you need to jump off, uh, we really appreciate you being here and thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, John. We're proud Thank to be here. Thank you very much. Thanks, John. Thank you very much. So um, as we do with every uh, Job with John program, uh, we have our senior center director, Sharon Mercurio, uh, read us a poem to close out the session. So Sharon, you're, you're on, and you have a lot of viewers this time. So I hope <laughs> you're right. ready. I think we're good. Um, well, it's May Day, and I was thinking spring in nature, so the poem today is The Peace of Wild Things by Wendell Berry. When despair for the world grows in me, and I wake in the night at the least sound, in fear of what my life and my children's lives might be, I go and lie down where the wood drake rests in his beauty on the water, and the great heron feeds. I come into the peace of the wild things, who do not tax their lives with the forethought of grief. I come into the presence of still water and I feel above me the day blind stars waiting with their light. For a time, I rest in the grace of the world and am free. Beautiful, you never <laughs> disappoint. Thank you very much. So uh, thank you all again and thank you to our uh, support staff and Acton TV, Mark Hall, Matt Frost, Austin Saganowicz, Mark Ducci. Uh, this has been Job with John on 94.9, May 1st, 2020. And um, Heather York will be back next week. Uh, some of you had some questions uh, that you sent me. I will respond to you directly uh, with those questions. Thank you all. Uh, be safe out there and have a good weekend.